Okay, in this video, we're going to do a bit of a wrap up involving information about different types of commutative rings with one. And so let's just look at the types that we've um, explored in previous videos. So first of all, just a commutative ring with one. So I'll let you guys look up what a ring is and what it means to be commutative, but it has some sort of identity. And then a special type of commutative ring with one is called an integral domain. And it satisfies the property that if a, b equals zero, then a equals zero or b equals zero. So in other words, there are no zero divisors. Next, there's something called a unique factorization domain, which is a type of integral domain that satisfies the following rule. Every non-zero non-unit will factor into irreducibles, and that factorization is unique up to multiplication by a unit. So I'll let you guys look at videos we've done about unique factorization domains, or UFDs, to get all of the precise details. And then next, we have something called a principal ideal domain, or PID. And that's a type of integral domain where every ideal is a principal ideal. In other words, every ideal is generated by a single element. Next, we have a Euclidean domain. And so that's an integral domain that has a special norm function. And that norm function allows us to do the division algorithm, essentially. Um, so that's an important type of integral domain as well. Next, we have a field. And a field is a commutative ring with one where every non-zero element is a unit. And actually, that automatically makes it an integral domain and all of the rest of these things. In fact, we've got the following inclusion of ideas. So the most restrictive down here is a field. And then up from that is a Euclidean domain. So every field is a Euclidean domain. And you can see that really easily because Euclidean domains have division with remainder. But inside of a field, you never need a remainder because you can always divide by anything because everything has an inverse except for the zero element. So every field is definitely a Euclidean domain. Then next, we proved in a previous video that every Euclidean domain is a PID um, and that every PID is a UFD. But then by definition, a UFD is an integral domain. And then finally, also by definition, an integral domain is a commutative ring with one. So now maybe the interesting thing here is to show that these containments are strict. In other words, we can find examples of commutative rings with one that are not integral domains and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll put those kind of next to each one. So next to this, I'm going to put a commutative ring with one that is not an integral domain. And just as an example, we'll use Z12. So notice if we take three and four in Z12, Neither of those are equal to 0, but 3 times 4 is equal to 12, which is 0 within z12. Okay, so that makes them each 0 divisors. Here's another nice example. So we could take z, z cross z. That's another nice example. And we could take the elements uh, 1, 0, and 0, 1 in z cross z. Notice neither of those are 0, but if we take their product, we get 0, cross, zero comma 0, which is 0 inside of z cross z. Okay, so there's some examples of commutative rings with 1 that are not integral domains. Now let's look at some integral domains that are not UFDs. So there's a bunch of examples of these. Maybe uh, an interesting one is this one, which is z adjoin i uh, times root 5. And here you can see that the number 6 factors two ways. It factors into 2 times 3, and it factors into um, 1 minus i root 5 times 1 plus i root 5. And then you can show that those guys are not associates of each other. In other words, this factorization is not unique up to multiplication by a unit. So good. There we've got an example of an integral domain which is not a UFD. Now the next thing we want is a UFD which is not a PID. And we can see a couple examples of these. So we know that Z is a UFD. So that's easy to say, see because we have the um, fundamental theorem of arithmetic. And then we proved 
earlier that z adjoin x is also UFD. So polynomials over a UFD also make a UFD. So that makes z adjoin x a UFD. And then we can think about the ideal generated by x and 2. So this is a non-principal ideal inside of z adjoin x. So in a previous video, we proved that this was a non-principal ideal. So I'll let you guys find that. And here's another example. So if we take Q, we know that Q is a field, but it being a field makes it a UFD. And then that makes Q adjoin X a UFD as well. But then if we do Q adjoin X adjoin Y, in other words, Q adjoin XY, that's also going to be a UFD. And then we can look at the ideal generated by X and Y. And that's going to be a non-principal ideal. We need both of those generators in order to get the whole ideal. Okay, so next, maybe we want something that is a PID but not a Euclidean domain. And this is actually much harder, and we have another video on the channel doing that, and you'll see that it's much more involved than these. And in fact, all I can really do here is write down the, the example and not talk through it because it's so complicated. So it's the integers, but now we adjoin this complex number, and that would be um, 1 half, 1 plus i times the square root of 19. So see, it's in the same spirit as this kind of thing up here, but in fact, you do get a PID in this case, but you will not get a Euclidean domain. And then again, we've got another video on the channel where we prove that, and like I said, it's quite involved. Now we need a Euclidean domain that's not a field, but there are tons of those. So Z is a Euclidean domain, and then um, K adjoin X, where K is any field, is a Euclidean domain. And in fact, there's lots of similarities between Z and K adjoin X, and all of those similarities really come from the fact that they're both Euclidean domains. And now down here at the bottom, we have some fields, so maybe we could have like the field of rational numbers, the field of real numbers, we could have the field of fractions for any Euclidean for any integral domain D, we could have a finite field, a ZP, and so on and so forth. So there are a bunch of fields as well. But um, we're not considering anything below that. That's kind of the most structure that we want. Okay, so uh, the next thing that I want to do is clean up the board and recall what irreducible elements are versus prime elements and see where that lies on this spectrum of commutative rings down to field. Okay, so there's one more thing I want to review about this string of commutative rings with one, and that is the role of irreducible elements and prime elements. So let's just look at the definition. So P, a non-zero non-unit, is called irreducible if when P equals AB, then A or B is a unit. So in other words, if we can factor P, then the only way to factor it is where one of the parts is a unit. Next, we say that P is prime if P divides AB, then P divides A or P divides B. And now I want to go up here and notice that in commutative rings with one, and thus, in all of the rest of these, because all of these are commutative rings with one, we have this property that prime implies um, irreducible. So prime always implies irreducible. Irreducible is like a weaker property. But then, down here, from UFDs all the way down to Euclidean domains, prime is the same thing as irreducible. And so uh, we proved that for UFDs um, back several videos ago, so I'll let you guys check that. But if it's true for UFDs, then it's true all the way down. And you might say, well, what about for fields? Well, notice, in, a, in order to be an irreducible or a prime, you have to be a non-zero no, and non-unit element. So this is actually true for fields as well. It's just that fields don't have any irreducibles or any primes. So there are no irreducibles slash primes in fields, and that's because everything is a unit or the zero element. Okay, great. And so that means up here, maybe there's like some something interesting going on where we can find an irreducible element that is not prime, and we can, and we can build that off of the example that we saw before. 
So we know that in z adjoin i the square root of 5, we know that 1 minus i root 5 times 1 plus i root 5 equals 6. But that tells us that 1 plus i root 5 divides 6. But that means that 1 plus i root 5 divides 3 times 2. But then you can check that 1 plus i root 5 doesn't divide 3, and 1 plus i root 5 does not divide 2, which makes this thing irreducible but not prime. So this actually just shows that it's not prime. You can actually further check that it's irreducible. Um, and we did that maybe not for this exact example, but for some very, very similar examples in previous videos. Okay, good. So I think this was a nice summary of the properties of all of these different types of commutative rings with one, and that's a good place to end this video.